In the last video, we carried out some timing analysis for one of our C-based example projects. This example project uses a tick interval of 1000 microseconds. That means that every millisecond, a software scheduler is going to run that decides which tasks are going to execute in that tick interval. Because the scheduler is running so frequently, it takes up a great deal of the execution time. As you can see from the pie chart, over 8% of the total execution time is taken by the scheduler itself. Rapidity Lite actually targets our in-house TTE32 processor, which is actually capable of doing all of these scheduling operations in hardware, which will free up time for our tasks. To see this, first let's save. Let's give it a meaningful name. and save it in the C example project. If we were to close this window, we could access it again at any time by looking inside the C example project and double clicking on the file. So now let's try it with the hardware scheduler for comparison. We can enable the hardware scheduler by selecting the hardware scheduling option in project properties. Once again, this takes us to the config.h file where we can modify the parameter directly. So let's run the timing analysis and see how it comes out. Do this exactly the same way as before by clicking gather timing data from simulation. We wait for it to rebuild. And then we wait for it to gather several buffers worth of data. So as we can see, the scheduling time is now around a thousand times smaller at 0.008%. This remaining time is actually just the few cycles needed to fill the pipeline at the beginning of each tick. So now let's compare the two side by side. If we bring the view down to the bottom, select the pie chart and compare it against the software directly. So as you can see, there's a big difference between the two we now have 97% idle time, whereas before we only had 89. But this isn't all the hardware scheduler can do. If we look at the detail view, we can see that the scheduler runs all the tasks in a tick one after another as soon as they become available to run. In other words, as soon as one task finishes, the next task due to run is executed immediately. Because of this, any variation in a higher priority task's execution time can lead to a change in the start time of the lower priority tasks. We call this effect jitter, and it can have a serious impact on any time-dependent algorithm, such as a control algorithm. On the raw data page, we can see the, j the release jitter and finishing jitter for the LCD transmit task. As you can see, they vary quite a lot. If you remember the previous videos, you'll know that we specify the worst case execution time of each task in the source code. The hardware scheduler can make use of this information to delay the start time of a subsequent task until the current task's worst case execution time has been reached. This can help us to eliminate jitter altogether. First, let's save the file. We call this technique hardware sandwich delays, and as usual it can be enabled through project settings. Once again, everything must be rebuilt before we can carry this out. And then we gather the usual number of buffers for our timing data. There's almost no difference from the previous example in the overview page. We still have 97% idle time. However, if we go to the raw data page, we can now see for the LCD transmit task that release jitter has been completely eliminated. To see what this means in practice, let's compare the timing details of our two examples side by side. So here, is the, here are the timing details of the hardware scheduler. 
as it usually operates. And here are the timing details of the hardware scheduler using sandwich delays. In the normal hardware scheduler, we can see that the menu update task executes and then immediately the LCD update task is allowed to run. However, in the version running sandwich delays, we can see that when menu update finishes, there is a delay for its worst case execution time to be reached and only then is LCD update allowed to execute. This will help to eliminate release jitter in most circumstances. By now, you might be wondering what happens if the menu update task exceeds its worst case execution time. Let's find out. We won't bother saving this example. Now, if you recall, worst case execution time is specified in the tasks page for the menu update function here. Double clicking will take us directly to the relevant piece of source code. Now suppose we reduce this to a very small value, such as 500 cycles. Notice also the line below, which shows that we have a recovery task called shutdown system that will run if we exceed that. Let's see that happen now. Simply click gather timing data from simulation again. Once again, the relevant files are built and the timing analysis will be carried out. This time, notice that a problem has occurred. We've detected a call to the shutdown system function. In other words, the instant our task overran its worst case execution time, in this case you can see that it exceeded its estimate in the problems view, timing analysis will stop because the system has been shut down, so there's no point in continuing. If we go to the timing details page, you can see an X where the ex excess happened and you'll see that no further operations have been carried out. This ability to immediately detect the overrun of a task within a cycle or two and execute a backup we call Task Guardians and it's a feature we've built into our TTE32 processor. So let's see what happens if we have an actual backup task instead of simply shutting down the system. So we'll add our backup task here We'll just put this task in the config.c file for now. So this is just a dummy task that contains a simple empty loop to show a significant delay in the timing analysis. Let's save that and try the simulation again. As always we have to build, but this time when we carry out the timing analysis it should allow it to complete. So, as we can see, the problems view still tells us that we exceed our worst case execution time estimate, this time by quite a lot of cycles, because the backup task is allowed to run. In the timing details page, we can see that menu update still runs, it still overflows its execution time estimate, and then the dummy task is allowed to take over. Execution then continues as normal with the LCD update task. So the TTE32 processor provides us with a hardware scheduler to improve our CPU utilization, hardware sandwich delays to reduce jitter, and task guardians to allow us to detect immediately when a task has overrun its execution time estimate and then run a backup task if so desired. That's it for this time. Thank you for listening.